incredibly lucky to be joined by UN Technology Envoy, Amandeep Gill. Good evening, everyone. It's great to see you in person. I was here for the first AI for Good Summit in 2017, and the excitement continues now in person. And thank you to Doreen and the ITU team for putting together another fantastic summit. A big round of applause for Doreen and the ITU team. So one of the questions that I get asked these days is, what is the United Nations doing on addressing the risks that are coming from AI. Uh, and you would have heard uh, some of those risks mentioned uh, during these discussions, whether it is misleading content, uh, mass disinformation, misinformation campaigns, it's the risk of massive job losses, public institutions not being able to adjust in time to those shifts that AI could could impose on our societies, or it's the risk of AI-enabled weapon systems that somehow escape the remit of international humanitarian law. You, know, you can list many risks. So what is the United Nations doing? And at the same time, I get asked, what are you doing to use the opportunities that artificial intelligence and the data revolution offer to accelerate progress on the Sustainable Development Goals. And the first answer that often comes up is, we are working to reinforce AI governance. Now, whether you're talking about addressing the risks or you're talking about leveraging the opportunity, you cannot do so without getting governance arrangements in place. And those governance arrangements can be at the industry level, at the technology community level, they can be at the national level, and they can be at the international level. So there is a space at the international level for the governance of these technologies. And the United Nations is not new to this game. In the past, organizations such as the International Civil Aviation Organization have worked together, have reinforced international collaboration so that civil aviation technologies can be used safely and sustainably around the world. Likewise, the International Atomic Energy Agency has helped us control the uses of nuclear technologies, make sure that peaceful uses are advanced while uh, the risks related to nuclear weapons, nuclear safety, nuclear security can be managed responsibly. So this is not new. What is exciting today in terms of the opportunity on AI governance is that there's a larger process that's underway, and that's the process to craft a global digital compact by next year. And I want to repeat this, by next year. So there is an immediate, once-in-a-generation opportunity to plug our efforts into something that's owned by member states, but that has the support of other stakeholders, private sector, civil society, and the technology community. And the AI governance problem cannot be separated from other issues around digital governance, whether it's human rights online, issues with social media platforms, the basic digital divide that combined with the data divide and the innovation divide risks losing a large proportion of the planet's population outside of this exciting opportunity. So we have to embed AI governance into a larger system of digital governance. And specifically on artificial intelligence, we are working together across the UN system, the International Telecommunications Union, UNESCO, the Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights, the UN University, UNDP, and many other entities to harness both benefits of AI, but also to address its risks. In the context of the Global Digital Compact process, the Secretary General has made a few suggestions on AI. And today, I just want to mention one suggestion that's been on the top of uh, the minds of experts and policymakers. 
and that is a high-level advisory body on artificial intelligence that's multi-stakeholder, that's global, and that meets regularly to review the risks because the technology landscape is shifting fast. Today, we understand some risks, but there are some risks that we may not understand. So we need to be able to accordion out our responses as the risk landscape evolves. And if we don't keep the risk landscape under review, like we do on climate change with the IPCC, then we may not be able to come up with the agile governance responses that are needed. So that's the first functionality uh, that I would like to mention. And then there is a need to make sure that the international governance responses, whether they are in the European Union, the United States, China, and other countries, are sufficiently aligned. They follow certain common principles, they follow certain common objectives, and businesses can operate, technical communities, scientific communities can operate in a situation of governance connectivity. So mark these words, governance connectivity, aligning international governance approaches so that they are better compliant with human rights, with rule of law, and with the common good, which is our main focus at this summit. A third function of such a body would be to incentivize research and development and innovation in AI governance. I dare say investments into AI governance are lagging far behind investments into AI products and services for the market. We need to work harder on safety, on governance, on benchmarks, so that this whole ecosystem can move up in a responsible, well-governed way. It can earn the trust of governments, publics, consumers, and average citizens, and we avoid risks and harms that we clearly know are possible today. There are harms and risks that are current. There are harms and risks that may lie in the future. We don't want to distort efforts by just thinking about existential risks that may lay lie far out in the future, but there are existing harms that we can start to work on right now. So let me conclude by saying that this international governance aspect of AI will sit together with national regional approaches, which different countries, depending on context, depending on their own regulatory capacity and, and philosophies, will undertake. It'll sit together with industry level, technology community level approaches through standards, through codes of conduct, through protocols for deployment, but this system has to work together. We cannot have one part of the system not be aligned with the rest of the system. And these proposals of the Secretary General, the work that we are doing across the UN system at this point in time, will help these different, align these different tiers, make sure that this is resilient to face the risks of the future. The time for action is now. The opportunity is there to embed these solutions, these important frameworks for international governance of AI technologies into a larger global framework that member states can come together and adopt at the Summit of the Future next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.